Yes, so uh, welcome everyone uh, to this uh, hybrid edition of the challenges of creating digital twin for the construction phase uh, workshop. Uh, it is our pleasure to be here physically in Rome and also uh, not so physically here, or at least uh, digitally here in, uh, in Rome with us. Um, today, or, or this, this session, will be actually presenting all in all uh, four recently started uh, European projects, all of them dealing with the very same topic, and that topic is the uh, creation of the digital twins. And uh, of course, uh, all the presentations, uh, what we will be listening today, they will be covering this um, this question that how to create a digital twin in the, on the construction phase. Uh, and we have the pleasure to have uh, one of the representatives also from the funding agency. And I would like to ask her to tell a few words, Victoria, if you would be mind. Yes, thank you very much, Gabor, and good afternoon to you all. Um, thank you for having me um, with you today. And I'm really pleased um, to be able to say a few words uh, at the beginning of this uh, workshop, um, as I am the project officer in the health um, and digital executive agency of the European Commission. And I am responsible for three of uh, the projects that are gathered uh, here today. And I think uh, just as a um, word of introduction, um, I guess you know that uh, only two weeks ago, the Commission uh, adopted the communication on the new European uh, Bauhaus, which is an initiative uh, to express um, the EU ambition uh, of creating beautiful, sustainable and inclusive uh, places and ways of living. And this is, of course, a very ambitious uh, movement uh, to connect uh, on the one the European Green Deal to our um, living spaces. And what, what I found very relevant in this uh, communication um, is that it underlines in particular uh, that digital twins in the construction uh, industry can improve uh, the sustainability performance um, of materials, products and buildings. So this is very much uh, in line uh, with the objectives uh, of today's uh, four digital uh, building twins projects, which I'm at developing um, real time uh, digital representations of buildings or of, of infrastructures. Um, and with the use of these technologies, of these tools uh, to collect and process uh, real-time data and information, I think the objective is uh, that companies will be able to monitor continuously the progress that is made on, constru on construction sites against uh, BIM-based models. And overall, uh, this, uh, these innovations should lead to uh, better allocation of resources, better scheduling of forecasts, uh, reduction of construction costs, and last but not least, uh, an improved safety of workers um, on the construction site. So, um, and when we know that um, uh, the digital intensity of the construction sector is uh, quite low and that it has a slow absorption rate um, of uh, new technologies, uh, well, new digital technologies, I mean, um, I think that the, today's projects are really on the right path uh, to achieve um, the, the, the transition that the EU is aiming at. It's a twin transition. It will be green uh, and digital. So I think this is very much uh, on topic. And um, voila, with that, I'm very um, looking forward uh, to uh, the presentations uh, of Ashlyn, Cogito, Beam Proof, and uh, Beam to Twin. And I hope um, so do you. And I will have to leave you around uh, 5 30, unfortunately, but uh, I'm really here with uh, a lot of pleasure. So, voila, back to you, Gabor. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much for your kind words and introduction uh, on, on, on this matter. So we are really happy to, to have you with us and to, to listen to the, the progress that have been happening in the last one year in these projects. Uh, and, uh, and with this, I think I will immediately hand over uh, to Frederick uh, to start the presentation on the Codgito project. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you, Victoria, for introducing the session. Um, uh, I'm, I'm here to represent the Cogito project. I'm Frederick Boucher from the University of Edinburgh in the UK. I'm the technical coordinator for that project, uh, but that is led from uh, Greece, actually. Um, I will 
you'll see the consortium at the end. Um, I'll do some a bit introduction there, but I'll go straight into the the the, the topic and the focus of Cogito. Um, the goal of Cogito is to uh, create a digital twin methodology, which uh, essentially reflects what Victoria just mentioned, uh, and that is uh, to make use of asplant information in the form of the BIM model, but also other information like uh, some, put some possible schedules and budget and costing data, um, and then combine this with uh, uh, information coming from the actual construction sites, uh, and that could come from sensors, from reality capture sensors, uh, but also from external sources like weather data, for example. Um, and, and all this data is uh, uh, integrated um, into a data management platform, which we call the construction phase, the digital twin platform. Um, and this uh, linked data uh, supports a number of um, uh, use cases uh, related to uh, health and safety, quality control, um, adaptive uh, workflow management. Uh, and these are themselves supported by some uh, especially graphical user interface solution. So that provides the interface between the user uh, and those use cases and the data they generate. Um, and what I will do now is I will actually explain what are the use cases we are focusing on. And, and subsequently, I will highlight some of the initial challenges uh, that we kind of anticipated, but obviously are you know, becoming clearer and uh, are confirmed uh, as we progress the project. Um, oh, I should highlight that um, our focus is, is on the infrastructure sector. Um, uh, so I have a nice picture of a tunnel here, but you know we understand infrastructure reasonably broadly. Uh, but uh, as you'll see, our validation um, pilot sites, they are uh, very much infrastructure focused. Uh, so this is just a summary of the conceptual architecture for our system. And really it represents the same information as before. Uh, but in a slightly different way and maybe a little bit more detail. Uh, at the bottom, you have on the left-hand side the plan as plan data and the right-hand side a range of uh, uh, as-built data um, that is captured during the construction. Uh, and in the middle, we have the digital twin platform that handles uh, that data and all the data produced by the different services and, and products. Um, and, and you can see here the list of products. So on the left-hand side, we have everything related to time management. Uh, in the blue, we have two boxes related to safety. In the purple, we have uh, quality control aspects. And in gray here, we have uh, the two um, graphical user interfaces uh, to Cogito. One is to, we call it the digital comment center. And this is more of an offsite, even though it's browser-based, uh, as uh, some uh, certainly mobility <laughs> enabled in it. Uh, but it's meant for offsite monitoring for project managers who are not necessarily right there at the call front. Uh, but we also have the digital twin AR viewer, which is meant to be used really on site and where information is uh, overlaid through an AR solution. And the use cases for our project, uh, uh, I will go through essentially the, the time related things, the safety things, and the quality control. Um, and, and in all of these cases, we have uh, two stages. We have a planning stage, and then we have an execution stage. Uh, so, you know, planning of the construction project and then during the execution of the project. Um, so here we have a first set of services uh, that support uh, a detailed workflow modeling given uh, as planned data that includes the 3D beam model and the schedule that the construction team will initially generate. For those familiar with the construction domain, schedules tend to be reasonably high level, uh, but for uh, effective uh, monitoring um, and understanding of progress and whether there is an issue arising, uh, it's very useful to have a much more detailed executive um, actionable workflow. So there is a, a set of tools uh, that are being developed there and they're actually also uh, supported by blockchain technology for transparency and security. Uh, and then during the execution of the project, uh, we make use of, in particular, but not only, but uh, IoT data, uh, essentially sensor data for locating resources on site. And we make use of that data and try to infer uh, progress uh, on the different activities. And obviously that is used to understand 
whether an activity is still ongoing, is going late, is completed, and if it's completed, then there is an automatic trigger of what comes next in terms of the detailed workflow. Um, so this is for time management and workflow management. Uh, then on the quality control side, uh, we have again, uh, we take the as plan model and we can plan from this what are the quality control activities that uh, need to be done and that can be defined partially automatically. Um, and then once the project is executed, uh, we collect visual and 3D data from the construction site and are developing tools for processing that data automatically and infer both geometric type quality control uh, results, but also maybe visual type quality control. So for example, um, you know, surface of concrete element to give you an example. Um, and finally, we also have some safety uh, applications. And, and here uh, at the planning stage, we want to take the BIM model, actually the 40 BIM model, and uh, you know, automatically plan what would be the safety features uh, that would need to be that need to be implemented during the construction uh, uh, delivery phase, uh, and then during um, uh, uh, execution, we are also looking at some uh, tools to track resources and particular workers, uh, and essentially give them warning to avoid uh, accidents. So that can be because they are getting near a dangerous zone that was identified during the planning stage, or it could be if they are getting close to a um, mobile piece of equipment, uh, because being struck by equipment is a, is an, a common source of uh, accident in construction. Um, and then, uh, as I said, we have the digital comment center and the digital twin AR viewer, but I've already introduced those. But the idea here is that the output of the services that I've just described uh, can uh, then be visualized either on-site or off-site through those services. And I think I realized I forgot to put a box here, but there is also the virtual safety uh, tool here. Uh, and the idea of that tool is actually to create a training material that is uh, that uh, actually training scenarios that can be experienced through uh, virtual reality uh, technology, uh, and the idea is to actually try to inform those scenarios using, uh, you know, actual experiences on site. Um, okay, so what are the key um, uh, challenges that we uh, I have identified? Um, arguably, the whole thing is a challenge, uh, and you could have identified many. Uh, areas of challenges in this. Um, so, you know, I'm not trying to give you an exhaustive uh, list of challenges, but I have identified five that I'm uh, happy to discuss, and I'm, I, I'll be looking forward to hear uh, from other presenters and the audience later about uh, comments about this. Uh, one of them is to uh, get the right uh, input data uh, at the planning stage. Um, you know, BIM models come with certain levels of quality uh, and there are challenges about getting the right quality. Uh, in our case, because we are in the infrastructure domain, we also have to um, uh, deal with the fact that there is, you know, a uh, uh, transition towards IFC 4.3, which covers the infrastructure domain more, uh, but IFC 4.3 is not, bro you know, widely supported yet. So that's a bit of a challenge for us because that's an important schema, but it's not widely used. Uh, it will be, I'm sure, fairly rapidly, but you know that's something that will happen probably during the duration of the project. Um, and then certainly one thing that is challenging is how to be uh, to offer a solution to create detailed um, uh, actionable work plans, uh, workflows uh, from that input data. Um, uh, and so we are looking at different uh, template-based solutions, for example, to try to uh, uh, expedite this. Uh, maybe I should qualify this. Uh, if I give you an example, um, uh, maybe from the building sector, um, typically in construction schedule, you will have you know, an activity that says columns, ground floor. Uh, and there will be you know, four weeks or five weeks. Um, now, in reality, that's actually um, a very broadly generated activity. In practice, there is a lot of tasks going behind this. Um, and so what we need to do here is take that 
uh, broadly defined activity and actually split it up into um, uh, the detailed workflow for delivering those columns. And that will include, you know, making the environment safe, uh, bringing formwork, uh, bringing the reinforcement, the concrete, uh, and then, you know, a curing and uh, quality control. So there's a number of things that actually need to happen that is implicit in the construction schedules typically generated in construction. We want to make that explicit. Uh, but that means it's challenging. Um, on the um, execution uh, side of the project, um, when you look at the collecting data, certainly a big challenge is to get a robust indoor and outdoor localization uh, within a meter. So outdoor, typically, you may be able to achieve that with uh, GPS or more broadly GNSS technology. But here we are talking about uh, infrastructure, which may include uh, uh, areas that are GNSS denied, and particularly if you were talking about tunneling. Um, so we're looking at, uh, you know, um, developing or not developing, but identifying and combining technologies to support both. Um, on the visual data side, uh, clearly a challenge is to be able to relate 2D pictures to components in the digital twin platform. So it can be great if somebody walks on site and say, oh, I find a defect here, take a picture. But for all this image to be really useful, there needs to be an efficient process to link that visual data to the digital twin platform. So locate the data, or I call it registration here. So, um, and these are you know, some challenges, um, and some of that could be automated. I know, for example, through the use of the AR technology, uh, otherwise, you need to provide, you know, easy to use interfaces to achieve that. Um, and, and then the fifth one I talk about, which obviously is a challenge for all the projects here, is, you know, we, we would like to develop a data model ontology uh, that covers all the domains of construction project delivery. It's easy to do that to some extent. I mean, it's, it's simplistic to say it's easy. But what you really want to achieve is uh, offer a data model that is, you know, replicable and usable broadly by industry. That is actually employing as much as possible of existing widely used ontologies, um, and that uh, you know, so that it will, it will, it is more likely to be to use later on. And that's probably an area, by the way, where where the the four projects that are uh, funded simultaneously could probably collaborate to, to try to promote. Uh, the you know what are the good set of ontologies and data models that could be used for various use cases. Just to tell you a little bit about pilot sites uh, to finish this, we have a pre-validation site, so I call it pilot site zero here, uh, that is based in Austria, uh, provided by a partner uh, Romberg SRG, um, and they have uh, they use that site themselves to test a lot of technologies before deployment. So this is actually a perfect site to to do pre-validation work. Uh, and then uh, we have our two partners, Romberg SRG, but also Ferrovial, uh, that are uh, providing us with two pilot sites. Uh, one that seems maybe used, we're still trying to confirm this, um, is um, the Copenhagen Metro extension in Denmark. Um, uh, you know, we planned these things ahead years before the validation happened. Uh, but obviously, uh, that makes assumptions in terms of when uh, pro what, in which state the projects will actually be by the time we, we need to do the validation. So um, so we, we're working to see whether these work still, but there's no worry because uh, our partners are uh, very large uh, uh, companies and they actually have loads of valuable projects at any time. So it may not be Denmark, but uh, at the moment we're still looking if we can use Denmark. Uh, and that one is much more likely. Uh, it's in Spain. It's the high-speed underground, uh, actually, multimodal uh, station. And there is a station itself, but also there is some really interesting uh, rail um, uh, construction, civil engineering construction for the rail tracks uh, before the, the, the station that uh, we're looking to use as uh, validation case studies. And I think that's me. I think I'm about on time. Uh, this is the list of partners at the bottom. Uh, and obviously, uh, please follow us uh, on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Uh, we do post uh, updates of our projects nearly on a weekly basis. So thank you very much. 
Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Frederick. It was a very interesting presentation and you have listed really, really good challenges. So we will have a, a kind of a question round at the end of the workshop. So if, if there will be questions from the audience or from those who are online, so you will have the chance to, to ask the question uh, toward the end of the uh, end of the end of the session, actually. And now we will transit to the second project, uh, BIM to Twin, and I will ask uh, Bruno to start or share his screen or ask me to share. Yes. Right. Th th thank you, Gabor, for giving me the floor. I'm just sharing my screen. Okay. Yes. Okay, is that... Okay, you can see it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Frederic, for this very, uh, very interesting uh, first presentation. Uh, lots of questions on my side, but anyway, uh, I will uh, I will uh, present you uh, the Beam to Twin project. So, uh, in all Beam to Twin optimal construction management and production control, I'm Bruno Fiens from CSTB. Uh, so CSTB is a coordinator of this project that uh, started uh, two months ago, but it's a case, uh, uh, 12 months ago, but it's a case of, um, uh, of the main of the project uh, here. So uh, a few words about the consortium. We are uh, 15 in this, uh, I would say, well-balanced uh, consortium. Uh, so we have uh, research and technology centers, we have academics partners, we have uh, contractors also, uh, companies uh, for technology transfer, engineering, specialized in engineering, we have a startup also, and we have also the support of uh, two IT firms. And uh, as you can see on the map, uh, uh, we are quite spread uh, from uh, Israel to, to Finland. Um, the, as an introduction, the first, uh, the, the, main, the heart of, uh, of our project is uh, also a digital twin platform, uh, so the, our DBT. Uh, so this, the aim of this platform will, is to provide a full situational awareness and an extensible set of construction management applications. Some of them will be developed in the frame of, of the project, but we aim to develop a platform open enough to uh, to enable a new new application to be connected uh, on it and the overall uh, aim of this platform is to uh, to, to 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 simplify uh, the, the the construction management uh, re by reducing uh, waste uh, reducing cost uh, shortening schedules uh, enhancing the quality and the safety and also uh, reducing the carbon footprint. And within this platform, uh, the, the, the key component of, of this platform is the project status model, uh, which will be, or which is linked to the BIM model, so the building information model provided by uh, the, uh, the, 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 um, the design phases just before the, the construction uh, itself. And well, Beam to Twin, I didn't, I don't know if I, I mentioned it, is focusing on construction, on site construction, uh, comparing to Gogito, which, who, who is on, uh, on infrastructure. A few words about high level architecture at this, at this stage. So in the middle of the picture, you have the digital uh, twin platform. Uh, that is uh, that is uh, collecting uh, monitored data that is coming from the, the physical site. So uh, these raw data are interpret, merge, and they are uh, they, they, they are put into uh, the, the different uh, databases uh, according to the to our uh, project status model, which is compared to the BIM model. Uh, so the as design as uh, as plan uh, product and processes in order to uh, deduce some information and have uh, ensure uh, uh, a feedback on what is supposed to be done on site i won't go into detail of that uh, so uh, so in this uh, in this architecture if we adopt another view of it uh, it's on the right hand side. So you have in the middle here the platform, the digital twin uh, platform. 
uh, at the bottom of this platform through different layers, we are able to monitor uh, input data to uh, acquire input data coming from uh, from the field, from the on-site, uh, uh, from the construction itself. These data could be coming from sensor, lasers, photogrammetry, barcodes, RFID, uh, and so on. Also, uh, so this, when these uh, data are acquired, they are treated in order to be uh, then uh, stored in the project status model and compared to the beam. And then at the top of that, through uh, an API, you have various applications that can be developed in order to evaluate the progress of the, uh, of the building. Uh, the quality of what has been erected, the cost, and so on and so forth. So on our side, within the frame of the project, we are going to uh, focus on specific applications, uh, as you can see on the left hand side here. So first one will be about progress monitoring and quality control for volumetric building. Uh, for instance, when we, when a, a wall is erected, we will check if the wall has the right dimensions compared to what was planned in the beam initially. Uh, same for the quality of the surface and the textural work on this wall. Uh, is it painted, uh, totally painted, painted in uh, with the right color and so on? So this, this, is, this will be two applications that will be developed. Another totally different will be uh, focusing on uh, occupational safety and health for the on-site workers. So we will check if, uh, if, for instance, they are wearing a helmet or security equipment, if uh, this security equipment have been put in place on-site at the right places at the right time also. Uh, so this will be one another one of these uh, vertical application here. We will also develop a module or an application focusing on the uh, optimization of equipment in order uh, to make the best use possible of heavy equipments like cranes, but also to optimize uh, the movement of trucks on site, for instance. And the last one will be focusing on production planning. So here we will take into account not only the information uh, monitored and coming from the, the site itself, but also we will connect the system with uh, the supply chain uh, system information where, when available uh, in order to, 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 to monitor and to have a real-time uh, real um, status of the, of the issues coming from on-site, coming from the delivery chain, uh, in order to be able to recalculate the impact on these issues on the, uh, on the, uh, the planning itself and to produce new planning taking into account these, uh, these issues. So uh, well, now the main steps in order, in order to develop the, that in the, in the frame of the project, first of all, of course, we will uh, start with the development and integration of the platform itself and the applications uh, I mentioned. Then we will test this platform, uh, of course, uh, with the different components, and we will deploy this solution in uh, on site uh, through uh, our uh, various uh, pilots and we will measure the impact of this uh, of this platform of the tool we are provided we are providing uh, on the uh, on the construction site itself of course in the same time we will think about the future and develop exploitation pathways and business models for uh, for this platform Well, the main challenge is, well, I, I recognize uh, lots, uh, lots of them uh, in Frederick's uh, presentation, but, uh, well, we, we have to, uh, to, to, to develop the, the monitoring techniques. I mean, we are going to acquire on-site uh, information through uh, cameras, uh, sensors. So we, are deal we will deal with image recognition. We will deal with uh, um, uh, uh, point clouds, uh, and we have to map 
these uh, these elements, I would say, uh, towards the entities that are listed in the in the beam coming from the uh, the, the the design phase. So uh, it's quite an important challenge there. We will have also to to deal with heterogeneous uh, streams of uh, of information. So coming from on site on one hand, but also I was talking about uh, the connection with external supply chain. Uh, system information, so we have to put that all together and to 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 have a, a common understanding and semantic uh, of uh, about this uh, heterogeneous information. We have then to uh, to 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 develop this uh, project status model to be able to represent both products and processes. So this model has to be developed and has to be uh, rich enough and presenting the, the, the right number of facets in order to be compared to, to the beam itself. Uh, and several modules, uh, simulation modules have to be uh, also de developed. Uh, and also, all together, I didn't mention yet that, the, we have to develop a dashboard in order to make the, this uh, amount of information uh, usable for the end users uh, that will be on site. The demo cases, uh, we have uh, three of them. So one in France, uh, it, uh, it's an hospital uh, that will be uh, partially refurbished and extended. Uh, in Spain, uh, it's uh, an hotel and uh, together with uh, offices, uh, it's a new construction. And we have also a third one in uh, in Finland. It's new construction, but this time it is a residential area. So, uh, well, you can follow us on uh, on on these uh, different uh, different media, and uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Bruno. It was very, very interesting. Uh, and, and as you have listed, there are a lot of challenges, but the, the questions about the challenges are coming later on uh, throughout the end of the workshop, okay? So uh, then we will uh, now continue with the, the project that's called Ashwin. And Lucien, are you there to start? Yes, I see. Yes, I'm there, just uh, and we going see you. back to... Unmute. Okay, so you can see me, you can hear me, you can see my slides, everything, it's, uh, it works well. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I mean, good afternoon, and thank you for still being here um, so late in the, in the day. Uh, my name is um, uh, Luciano Muriano. I'm from uh, TU Berlin. I'm a postdoc researcher there and uh, supporting Timo Hartmann on coordinating the, the Agile project. Today I'm going to present you uh, the, uh, the digital twin toolkit we are putting together in Ashwin to enable uh, improvements in efficiency during the construction. I'm going to start briefly by presenting the consortium, then I'll continue with reiterating some of the issues we are all well aware when it comes to the construction phase, present, uh, present you our ambition and approach on Ashwin, the importance of the proposed toolkit to achieve our ambition or our goals set by our ambition. And at the end, I'll put uh, on table some of the challenges related to, uh, to our efforts. So within Ashwin project, uh, we are 14 partners from nine new member states, um, running from Greece, uh, Serbia, Croatia, uh, Austria, Spain, Germany, Netherlands, Poland and, and Sweden. Uh, there is a mix of uh, academic, uh, industry, um, um, uh, standardization bodies, uh, technology uh, providers that brings to the table strong expertise in construction management and engineering, digital twin technology, IoT, data security, and, and privacy. Um, it's worth mentioning here, um, because I don't have a, a separate slide for that, uh, within the, the project, uh, we have uh, 10 demonstration um, cases, uh, which tries to cover three um, um, uh, phases, uh, but mainly with the focus on supporting the construction, like design, construction, and, and, and operation. And uh, we have bridges, foot bridges. Um, uh, we also have uh, airports and, and, and ports or um, uh, elements related uh, from, from ports. Um, and we have buildings and uh, stadiums. 
So that will be like the, the, the range of applicability of uh, some of the, the innovations we are proposing and, and, and working out on, on Azure. Um, like I mentioned, when it comes to the construction industry, some of the issues we are all aware or well aware of, but I always like to present them to, uh, to build a little bit more awareness around it, um, are related to waste generation and high environmental impact low productivity and uh, uh, without any secret it's one of the dangerous most dangerous environments people can work um, the statistics show that productivity is currently on a descending trend and there hasn't been for a while major positive changes regarding the safety waste is created in various ways uh, in the construction and emissions created with the use of um, where required resources to build uh, something so with every phase uh, with every resources we are putting together on the um, uh, at work to construct something we are basically um, uh, having a certain impact on the environment um, so it's just some some numbers uh, so that to, um, uh, to, uh, to to provide some ground that so the industry is creating around 40 percent of the solid waste uh, there are 40 percent of the co2 emissions um, we are responsible of and um, to uh, give you some numbers about the, the safety incidents we're still having in our industry high fatality rate um, an average of 6.2 fatal accidents at work um, so as, as you can see this is a, a kind of the uh, the pictures the picture we, we we kind of have currently in in our industry uh, and um, of course one of the the questions is like uh, why people are leaving to work on on other uh, on, on other industries, of course, uh, besides other aspects. Um, so uh, our ambition um, it's um, that, that a digital twin um, kind of a vision that the digital twin can help improve efficiency during the construction phase. Uh, since different people have different views on the on the efficiency, our view is towards the holistic. Uh, approach to increase productivity, safety, resource allocation, and, and cost reduction. So um, we are targeting, let's say, uh, with um, the, 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 the toolkit we are proposing on Ashven and with the, with the digital twin platform to um, uh, achieve a 20% better scheduling, uh, a better allocation of the resources, which also includes some aspects related to sustainability. Um, reduce numbers, um, uh, reduce number of accidents, uh, preferably um, um, uh, no more fatal accidents and as less as possible uh, near me, um, 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 real accidents and, and near misses. And of course, um, uh, in the end, also reduce the cost. I think all all this um, together can uh, basically help reducing um, uh, the cost. Um, our approach towards that, uh, the, the digital twin platform proposed by Arvin aims to achieve um, our ambitions by uh, considering the impact of the decision made during various phases. Uh, the decision made, for example, in the early design phases have impact on what can be later improved during the construction phase. Um, one of the, um, the, the, the key um, uh, aspects uh, we want to um, uh, let's say achieve is basically learning from the from the past projects and uh, to, to help us um, design better system that will um, uh, let's say uh, be um, um, efficient also during the construction phase um, we're using the state-of-the-art techniques we are aiming to use state-of-the-art techniques i'm going to present all the tools uh, but um, such as generative design for example we can look not only at generating a multitude of design but also generating a multitude of construction alternatives for each design so that we can um, select the most efficient one um, and the construction site, um, the construction phase requires tools that allow the managers to control the process in near real time, but also help them understand the impact the certain decisions will have by using um, real time simulations based on the IoT data. At the end, uh, we are also aiming towards um, a seamless uh, transition of all this data and knowledge so that it uh, supports the, uh, the, the operation phase. 
For that, uh, we can present you kind of um, related to our approach. There's the, the, uh, the kind of a high level architecture on which we have um, uh, several technology layers uh, that will be combined to help us achieve our ambition. Uh, some of them are kind of proven technologies. Um, so we have uh, main flux uh, with um, 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 the state of the art IoT platform. Uh, and as of month six, it's, uh, it is already up and running. And since then, we keep connecting, um, uh, let's call them things, right? So it's Internet of Things, um, 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 uh, different um, uh, data flows to it. Uh, we have uh, uh, the digital twin platform uh, for uh, visualizations um, of the design, but also uh, uh, currently working on developing some of our tools to um, um, uh, provide dashboards or ways to visualize and ways to make informed decisions that, um, uh, during the, uh, the construction. And um, of course, uh, and the, at the top, uh, it's mainly the, the, the proposed toolkit, um, which is um, over there is just some of the tools um, uh, we, we are currently exploring their use to support uh, some of the, 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 um, um, the tools we are developing on a project, which I'm going to present uh, 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 in a bit. Uh, but related to that, uh, we are looking into improving uh, all the decision making process by uh, implementing and developing uh, methods and tools that will make use of the uh, real-time data so that uh, um, um, the uh, site managers will take informed decisions. Uh, we have here the edge computing devices, which you'll see it's kind of connected to one of the, the challenges um, uh, we always need to think of, uh, but uh, it's a layer for pre-computing uh, the data and uh, within the IoT platform, we are also working on developing some of the state of the art um, uh, techniques um, uh, and methods to support data fusion uh, uh, and data processing like video um, images and uh, data processing algorithm um, um, using some machine learning techniques and um, uh, some advanced simulations. Um, One of the, the, the key aspects or the core feature of the digital tool platform is uh, also around the social innovations, um, which is um, um, by design, we want to ensure um, um, the privacy. So we call it privacy by design. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, people are making uh, ethical use of the collected data and also um, make sure that the, the data is collected um, um, safely. Uh, this also uh, um, kind of uh, build a little bit of, um, uh, of, of confidence and trust on, on people being monitored uh, and um, uh, increasing one of the, uh, the, the aspects um, which we see as challenging is the, the, the uh, uh, adoption um, of, uh, of such technologies. Um, and also, um, um, uh, we are also looking in having this um, real-time data flows and uh, a dashboard that will allow the, uh, the, um, the, the construction managers to make decisions in, in, in near real-time, let's say. Uh, there's also, um, we are seeking an active involvement from the white and blue color so that they can um, uh, work collaboratively together and contribute to the um, uh, improving the construction planning and, and um, uh, the management of the overall process. Uh, moving forward uh, is uh, the, uh, the, the main innovation, like I mentioned, the IoT platform and the digital twin part of it. Um, they are already deployed and uh, currently tying up uh, different uh, um, um, uh, innovation and different uh, uh, functionalities to support um, our ambitions. Uh, but uh, we have around um, 10 tools in uh, our toolbox that we are uh, currently working uh, on developing in, in Arjun. Uh, and like I mentioned, it kind of covers um, um, a three different, uh, the three different phases. Um, we are probably all aware now that there is no one tool do it all. And to achieve our ambitions on Anvish tool, um, um, the, the tools focus on, on certain areas that together contribute to, uh, let's say, the final goal we set. Uh, as, as of today, um, uh, we kind of finalize um, 
one of the um, 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 some important deliverables uh, on which we are defining the, the key performance indicators and uh, um, how we are actually going to measure uh, the contribution and the impact of um, 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 uh, each tool and we if we are basically on the right path to to reach the the, the impact by the end of the project let's say right uh, so we have for the design phase, we can start with the uh, evidence-based design tool. Like I mentioned, uh, with that, we look at the past project. We want to build uh, a knowledge base on which we uh, uh, want to identify how the previous design decisions made were actually, um, 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 uh, what is the impact on the construction site, for example. Um, then that, to that tool will also serve as a basis for um, 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 uh, developing the generative design, what is called here the generative design modeler. But like I mentioned, this is going to generate, besides a multitude of um, 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 uh, design possibilities in the early phase, it will also generate a multitude of the, uh, construction alternatives for um, um, uh, each design alternative so that we can see the impact um, or various impact on the um, um, uh, on the um, um, for the construction phase. Of course, it's early design phase, so um, there will be with um, with a certain um, uh, with certain margins. But again, it's kind of a uh, informative for early design phase to understand the impact that a certain design decision will have um, for the construction phase. Uh, that will tie up, and um, 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 we'll have a dashboard. Um, which um, uh, we call for the construction site simulator for early design phase, but uh, uh, that will provide uh, a way to the um, um, stakeholders involved in making decisions in the early design phase. Um, uh, even the, uh, the construction team, you can uh, bring it on, on board from the early design phase so that they can see uh, what is the, the, the impact of um, uh, different decisions and also they can compare different alternatives and see um, what will what will be the uh, the, the outcome of that uh, for the construction phase uh, we are looking for um, a, a near real-time simulation based planning tool uh, um, using uh, discrete event simulations uh, and making use of the, uh, the, the, uh, the the data coming from the sensors. And um, as you can see, it basically the tools aims to contribute to uh, all the four categories we have here uh, to improve scheduling, improve resources allocation, uh, uh, reduce a number of accidents, and uh, in the end, reduce uh, the cost. Um, and then uh, we have also for the, uh, for the construction phase, uh we'll have construction monitoring tool. yep uh yeah it's the one thing i think we have lost the kind of the screen sharing i'm not sure if for the rest of the group is the same yes the same yes, um, yes two minutes ago oh yeah. okay yes because the other thing is that we kind of run out of time <laughs> okay so if, if uh, it's uh, so mean, if you have a kind of a sliding uh, a closing slide that you can show then that would be nice perfect. yeah yeah Start sharing, start sharing. It's gonna be this one. Uh, so um, um, there's there's gonna be a, a toolkit making making um, uh, sen uh, making sense of the, the the IoT data and allowing the uh, the stakeholders to uh, to make informed decisions. Um, um, some of them in near real time for the construction phase to control the uh, the project. Uh, some of them that will serve later on for the operation phase. The multi physics matching tool risk-based assessment tool and GIS integrator for asset management. Um, there are, of course, um, um, several, uh, let's say, challenges. I try to kind of put them uh, there conceptually, um, but um, storing data, uh, imagine how much data you are collecting, actually. Uh, it's costly in terms of uh, money and also the emissions. Uh, another challenge I see, I'm not, I'm not going to go in detail, but I'm happy to discuss um, uh, this uh, during the um, um, uh, the discussions and Q&A at the end. Um, interoperability, uh, real-time uh, or near real-time updates of the construction digital twin, sensors deployment, availability and new ICT infrastructure, available and new ICT infrastructure, social acceptance and privacy concerns, and um, last but not least, regulatory barriers. Um, 
um, um, I invite you to, to access our site. You can find a little bit more details about um, uh, our demonstration cases and also about our project. Uh, stay in touch with us on Twitter and LinkedIn. We are posting uh, on Zeneto. We are posting regularly updates. Uh, and uh, feel free to get in touch with us um, um, using this email address. Uh, last but not least, uh, um, it's uh, a project founded uh, under uh, European Union Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program uh, with uh, that specific uh, uh, grant agreement. And uh, a last disclaimer, this document reflects only the author's views and the commission is not responsible for any use that may be made of the information it contains. Thank you very much. And I apologize for um, uh, going a little bit over time. Uh, yes, uh, last of the four projects, uh, BIM proof. Um, a few words from my side. I'm Ruprecht Altenburger, uh, located in Winterthur, Switzerland. I am originally a professor for control engineering at our uh, university, and I'm the technical coordinator of this project. You might see a few things that you already seen within uh, the other projects, like uh, different things. BIM proof focuses similar as the other projects on the construction process itself. Uh, compared to Cogito, we focus m uh, mainly on buildings and not on infrastructure projects. Uh, the idea is to track the project, the progress of the whole um, construction progress with autonomous systems, with ground robots and with drones mainly and using digital twin technologies uh, as you all. Um, the target is similar as uh, in other projects. We want to increase the efficiency. We want to get a better scheduling for the whole process. We want to enhance safety and reduce risks on the construction site and in one pilot use case, we also focus on fire issues on the construction site itself. We have three pilots. Um, one is from uh, a partner in Norway, Afgruppen. Uh, they mainly want to show the, the progress and the scheduling uh, issues in the project. Uh, the second is in Spain at our partner Vias, where we focus on worker safety issues. And finally, the third one is in Switzerland, HRS, where we um, consider fire protection and fire is issues during the construction process. Uh, the project itself, it runs for, uh, it's in its 13th month now, uh, more than one year. We recently had our M12 deliverables and milestones reached, uh, and uh, we are 12 partners. Our uh, project coordinator is Gabor. Uh, I'm the technical coordinator, and a few words to our 12 partners. We have uh, three industrial partners from construction industry, AFGRUP and VIAS and HRS, uh, as already mentioned, during, for the pilots. We have two industrial partners, uh, Robotnik from Spain. They do ground robots and do uh, data capture within this project. And Catenda, very valuable partner. Uh, Catenda is a spin-off quite a few years ago from Sintef. Sintef, Gabor is from Sintef, uh, is a uh, also, uh, it's the product project uh, coordination, and we have five partners from universities and research institutes, like uh, as already mentioned, Sintef, we from Switzerland, ZAW, Fraunhofer, and University, both in Stuttgart, and VTT from Finland. We also have. Uh, Dean, German Institution for uh, Standardization. We hope that we might find issues towards 
standardization or missing standards in the whole process. So uh, Dean will help us to make first steps towards that. Australo is for uh, dissemination responsible and websites. Yeah. Uh, so the BIM proof system, we already have seen some graphics. I try to do it as simple as possible. Uh, we have the twin, the digital twin. Uh, we, well, we have the two partners of the twin. We have the construction site itself here on the top, and we have the twin of it um, at the bottom. And we have a connection between them. Um, due to construction process, we have on one hand a direct data connection from the between the digital twin and the construction process and vice versa. But we also have data requests from, for example, a site manager. Something is newly built that day and then it sends, he or she sends a request uh, to the autonomous systems. They capture data. There will be some manual post-processing or uh, Automi automized as far as possible, and we have an update of the digital twin. The digital twin original comes from the planning phase, uh, clearly, um, here. So we have uh, the digital twin and really a connection and like a feedback loop from the construction process itself. As already mentioned, we have uh these uh direct data connection like where we track uh we we heard that in other projects Covita, for example as well um tracking of machines uh and persons we have uh what do we do with the digital twin we want to improve scheduling already heard before of course we want to improve worker safety we, i'll get back to that later on uh and also we want to use extended reality technologies to improve the collaboration on site based on digital twin data we have and we also use um, ai technologies both for efficiency and for safety issues and of course uh, that's uh, one important thing is that uh, we want to not only at hand over hand over the building itself, but also want to hand over a really good BIM model to the client. It might be not only a memory stick, it might be some more data. Uh, so there's there will be a lot of data. You already had that in your prob a project probably. So in brief, the overall system after one year we have a, a center the beam proof the so-called beam proof back and i don't want to go in too much detail in uh, into that and we have several satellites satellites that we develop on our own or we plug to this uh, back end but we also have proprietary 3d design tools for example and, and others yeah but these uh in the gray circles or ellipsoids, we we focus uh, in the development on on these. For example, uh, the drones. I think I have to change somehow here. No, it doesn't work. Uh, I have to switch somewhere else. Sorry. Uh, that didn't work, that link. Um, so, for example, here, uh, the drones, they might be a little bit, that's a movie, it might be a little bit jerky on your side, I don't know. So, we have indoor flights of the drones. We also, uh, we, we can fly in uh, outside, that's not a big issue, you get uh, commercial systems for that. Uh, but we also want to fly in GPS denied areas, so we develop those drones um, that are able to to fly in, with purely onboard sensors in indoors. Um, for the data capture with the drones, we focus on photogrammetry. 
uh, that's uh, next movie. So like uh, here you see the drone flying and we have a, well, onboard sensors to, to track and to, to uh, control the, the drone. But we also have uh, a gimbal with uh, standard photo camera that captures photo data and that one we use with photogrammetric software to uh, produce 3D data point clouds. Um, oh, no, that didn't work somehow. So, um, so that's a, a flight or here like a scanning of the drone uh, in our lab along walls. Uh, the second. Uh, system is the ground robot that's from our partner robotnik um a solution from advanced robotics and they mounted a leica blk 360 laser scanner which is responsible for the data capture and to create point clouds so that's the system from our spanish partner and um that are the the systems for the data capture one of the systems for data capture um safety issues we have ai in our project and ai algorithms for example for safety issues we focus on uh, fall from heights so we want to control and check if there are safety barriers for example and that are already uh, things that work pre pretty well. So we can feed uh, the system with um, with photos, standard photos manually captured or from the drone or from the robot. And we can find or not find uh, barriers on, uh, that that are uh, important yeah, and compare it to the to the BIM. Um, that's just in brief a few parts of the system. Then one issue is one important issue to keep the the BIM uh, in a in a good shape, uh, and there is the the issue that the BIM has different sources. The sources are from numerous um, proprietary softwares. We strongly rely and and focus on open standards like IFC and BCF. And uh, that's the idea how we want to track. So at, let's say uh, this is an issue like uh, building one story on a, on a, on a, um, on a building. Uh, so we have uh, a BIM at day zero and it progresses like that in time. We have some branching and we have li like connection to the original BIM in uh, at different stages. And we focus on working with the uh, IFC files and IFC uh, IDs. Um, that's a screenshot from from a system. I would switch to um, to uh, BIM Sync. Do you still see that, Gabriel? Gabriel? Yes, we can see it. Okay, okay. So that is uh, BIM Sync. That's uh, the software, the main software of uh, our partner, Katenda. It's a BIM collaboration software. They work in it the last nearly 20 years. So uh, what we have is uh, based on IFC files, the the building. And we what we have here is uh, a laser scan in this, uh, I think it's the fourth story. Um, so what we have here is, and we run some algorithms on it, so that are uh, point clouds or members of the point clouds or the points that fit to the IFC model. And that's like the rest that's uh, from the same scan. So that's the total scan. And if we switch only uh, to the rest we see like things like that are not modeled in the BIM like those safety barriers we can get an idea how clean and tidy is um, is the construction side which is also related to to safety issues of course so uh, that's one one implementation we we have 
And this one is in uh, BIMSYNC uh, from, from Katenda, but we also have it in an AR, a VR virtual reality environment already with uh, where we can collaborate in, the, in a 3D manner, like with uh, headsets and uh, collaboration between different partners. We showed that already to, to uh, external partners. There's the issue if that's really um, uh, possible to have VR systems on the construction site. That's an ongoing issue in the project. So um, that's in very brief from the BIM proof. Um, so thanks. Sis, can you hear us? Yes. 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 Yeah. We can see. Now. We can now. Hear now. No. No. Yes. But can you hear us? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, uh, because uh, we, we had one of the industrial partners here who was asking and uh, spending a few minutes uh, kind of asking question to you. But I will ask again him to, could you come here again and, and summarize your question? Yeah. Uh, hello. So uh, my question was, uh, how do you want to monitor the uh, entrance to the restriction zones by the workers? Uh, in the changeable environment and how you want to connect it with the BIM models. And I think that it was, uh, my question is addressed to the Gogito project. Uh, then uh, there was very interesting thing about the carbon footprint. So uh, how in BIM to twin projects, you want to uh, reduce this carbon footprint and if this information somehow will be implemented to the BIM models. Uh, third question uh, was uh, is about the social impact. Because uh, in the Ashing project, I could hear uh, that they take into account these uh, social aspects uh, and uh, trainings with nuclear workers. And uh, from my experience, 50% uh, of the success of the BIM implementation digital platforms is uh, social aspects. So I would like to know if in another project like uh, other projects like BIM to Twin or Gogito, you take into account the social aspects and interaction with local workers and somehow if they are taking into account their uh, requirements and opinion. And um, the last question is addressed to BIM proof. Uh, I would like to know what is the efficiency of the work of the drone and robot? So how many square meters can be scanned during the one flight, for example? Thank you. Yes, okay, so... so I, yeah, I think we will start from Cogito, okay? Thank you very much for yes. your detailed questions, yes. Yeah, great, thank you for the question. So I had the two questions addressed to me and Cogito project. Uh, the first one regards the uh, location tracking. So uh, well, what we are trying to do is uh, uh, combine um, GNSS-based tracking technology. So for example, using trackers pay on mobile phones of workers, you know, to track where they are um, uh, on site and then uh, link that location to the B model and the, the safety zones that have been pre-defined uh, uh, by the uh, planning tool, the safety planning tool being developed in the project. Um, that works um, uh, outdoors and for indoors, uh, we are looking at combining this with the, uh, some indoor location technology. So we've been doing some survey of existing technology, of the shelf technologies and new technologies um, and, and we are testing, actually, we are acquiring it, uh, tests um, uh, sensors from one company right now and uh, trying Linux indoor to see if it's uh, suitable for that particular use. Uh, regarding the involvement of the users, yes, uh, Cogito follows a, a user-driven innovation process. So the project really started with uh, uh, engaging with stakeholders and actually the whole project will engage with stakeholders in a co-creation process where we've been collecting uh, requirements from stakeholders and we will present uh, the system as it's being developed and get feedback. And obviously during the pre-validation and the validation, we will engage with 
uh, workers on site to understand uh, whether the, the tool meets their needs and if they have further feedback for further improvement. Thank you. I can't hear you, Gabo. Yeah. You mute, you mute, Gabo. You mute for online. Sorry. Now, now yeah. it should be okay. Yeah. So, uh, thank thank you for the for the answer, and I think uh, there is a room also to to kind of get the reply on on the same specific uh, team, at least from uh, from the social impact on, on Ashwin, and then we go uh, on the rest of the questions. Okay. Um, I, I think the question was uh, addressed in relation to the fact that in Ashvin we are actually considering this kind of a social innovations. Um, so I think it was um, addressed to BIM proof, uh, if I'm not mistaken. No, it, um, I, um, according to my notes, BIM proof was efficiency of the robots, and Ashvin was with the, with the involvement of the workers, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, it's part of the uh, it's part of our strategy to uh, to to have that involvement. Like I mentioned in in my presentation, uh, one of the aspects and uh, we we want to make aware uh, the people. Um, it's about this um, uh, privacy things, which basically tend to kind of um, 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 attach some uh, some some notes when it comes to people and uh, making sure that the data it's it's. Um, uh, used in a proper way and not on on other ways it is it is supposed to be used for example uh, but i think those kind of things needs to be made kind of transparent to to the users but then of course uh, uh, the involvement of the, the the blue color and the white color uh, it needs to be made especially when we are dealing with this kind of a, um, um, a, a control uh, let's say related applications or maybe making decisions regarding this uh, and I think those are kind of an essential uh, to um, uh, to involve, uh, like um, um, uh, like Frederick mentioned, also Johan mentioned, to basically involve the users to get their feedback and uh, see how useful are. Um, but there are there are some some other aspects related to uh, to the social and especially uh, uh, different ways to increase awareness to uh, to safety. Uh, and then maybe um, uh, we can do that through, uh, through various tools um, so that we can um, uh, basically, let's say, avoid um, a fatal accident and uh, also um, uh, even um, go down and, um, uh, let's say, reduce the number of the, the near misses so that they are much more aware about different aspects related to safety on the construction sites. Okay, thank you. Uh, and and then um, the question was to I think to Bim to Twin about carbon footprint. Yes, uh, uh, when I was speaking about Bim to Twin, so the reducing the carbon footprint is a is a, is a kind of uh, it's not a direct effect; it's an indirect consequence of uh, the several application application we are going to develop. For instance. Uh, we can you you can link that with what Johan has presented about the optimization of the different uh, equipment on site. If we optimize their uh, movement and we minimize their their use, uh, of course the consequence will be uh, the reduction the reduction of consumption of these kind of uh, of uh, vehicles, and as such, the consequence will be the redu reduction of the carbon footprint. Yep. Okay. Uh, answer uh, uh, accepted to say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and then uh, then we, we we go to be improved, and the question was about efficiency uh, of the of the drones and the robots. Yeah, uh, up to now we don't have a detailed investigation on on efficiency on robots, both robots and drones, uh, compare in comparison to manual. Uh, data capture, but what we see for so far is um, that the aspect that we, if we do a scan, maybe from day to day, that we can do it in the same way all the time. Um, 
especially uh, on the drones. We have uh, the flight times of the drones of, uh, of approximately 20 minutes with one uh, battery load. Um, and what we see there is that we have to take for a good scan quite a lot of photos. And if you do that in a manual way, you you don't get the same quality since since really a, a work you have to be concentrated on all the time and uh, the similar thing is with the robots and with the laser scans during laser scanning is a quite time consuming uh, work if you uh, want to have a good quality and that can be easily automated so in short not detailed investigation but it looks very promising so far oops that's okay yep. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Ruprecht. Uh, yes. Any further question? No. No. I think it's uh, at least from the from the physical ascendant side. So we have uh, we have reached the end of the questions here, uh, and also I have a question. Yes, if I sure. can ask one. Uh, to Ruprecht. Um, so is your intent to visualize the data that you collect by the drones, or is there more behind it? Um, um, I would be happy to get a visualization, but from a social aspect, what safety managers look for, uh, they want to get information, right? What's wrong, what's correct? So are you actually interpreting the data yes. that you collect? Yes. Um, are you processing it in any meaningful way? And yes. what metrics do you apply? What measures do you apply to actually measure their performance before and after? Uh, well, the, the drone takes photos, but we process them with photogrammetric software and, and get 3D point clouds out of it. And you can overlay them with the images, so you get really a, a 3D image of, of the data you captured. And what we can do is you can uh, compare it to the IFC or to the, to the, to the BIM directly. Uh, one major issue that you have to use the same coordinate system, but we did some steps towards that. Uh, so it's more than just taking images and watch the images. We really want to compare the, the 3D data. So that's the idea. If I make a comment, uh, because I represent the construction company, so the photos, especially 360 photos, are very important for general constructor. Uh, because we can, it's for us, it's like a photographic documentation of our work progress. Uh, and we do it, for example, of the installation before cover it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we talk, take photos, we can upload it to the platform. For example, we use one of these platforms called the Dalux Field and mm -hmm. connect it with the model. And later on, we can connect, we can compare uh, from the specific point, uh, photos and our work with uh, beam model and check if everything is correct done. The problem that right now we have to take these photos and someone, some of the worker has to do it and it's time consuming. For, for us, it's a crucial to do it in the automatic way every day or every week. And then, and then we have uh, time savings because we don't have to uh, ask for that uh, our workers, but it's can we do it somehow automatically and later on this kind of documentation is very crucial for the uh, guarantee departments. Okay. So I don't Thank know you. if you are aware of that, but uh, this functionality, I think that is very useful for general constructor. Okay. Thanks. Dalux Field is a Danish company, I just want to mention yeah. it. <laughs> But, but 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 on the other hand, again, this is not enough. It's not enough just to visualize and correlate the photo to a BIM. That's for me. That's given technology that's already working. It must be more. A safety inspector is looking for deficiencies um, and and detecting them, knowing where they are. Then there must be a process of to follow up, to fix it. Who is responsible for it? So I put the hat, my, my BIM to twin and Kokoto hat on for a second. And um, that's what we strive for. We also look into drones and there's very promising approaches that can be done. I think this workshop is also there to connect the different projects a little bit. And I'm really happy that this happens. Um, maybe we have to talk to each other a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
yeah that's for sure so it's uh, my notes are it, it's very long ones so when i was listening to to all of the projects uh, from a, a kind of a, a, a third uh, eye view so i i see many um, many kind of things that are we are actually addressing the same time so uh, just from different angle and uh, also in the in the base i i found many of of the similarities so so like that all of us is doing a, a platform and if if we all of us do a platform then then will those be able to kind of uh, interchangeable interoperable all of them are based on beam will it be will it be usable at the end to to kind of deliver something from the from the construction time to to the facility management so there are there are many many questions that that we, we should in in a common way address so uh, yeah yeah yes frederick and i, I was I, I was exactly, and that's what I mentioned earlier around the data model. Um, and there are very simplest things like even uh, how do you store a schedule or a workflow in an uh, or open format? I mean, workflow, there are some things, but even schedule, you know, we are, we're going down to use the MS Project XML because that's probably one of the rare open source. Uh, there are some other solutions, but that's not even an ontology. It's not uh, uh, So there are things that certainly uh, we all use and we all need to use. And IFC is obviously a, a, an, ob, an obvious common denominator, but there are also other domains like quality control. I mean, is there a, a data model for storing the quality control? Uh, we've come across various ideas across the uh, literature, but there is no, no th nothing that comes out you know strongly around this. And, and I think there is certainly um, it would be great to share what we find around these domains and, and where we think is the best way because if we want to have interoperable things we should that's the that's the basis right the data model and that's the basis for everything else now a tool with a tool of ours that a partner uses the data for whatever service uh, if we have the same data model ideally then they should be able to use the same service in in another project uh, platform Yes, and, and that's correct. And, and I or, or already can say, at least from the improved side, that there is a Microsoft project converter to IFC tasks. So if you if you want that, it's 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 for sharing. <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. I mean, it's it can be used. Certainly, you can use the IFC schema, but it doesn't provide the, the depth uh, of uh, information that you can get through other schemas. So. Um, I, I mean, again, it's good. It's one way to do it. Uh, the other way to do it, it would be great to see, you know, where are the different projects heading, and and you know, may, maybe there's feedback that we can learn from what people have already looked at, because some of us may have more experience than others. In this, yeah, kind of that's true. Yes, yeah. So, so from uh, so, I, I think uh, we would need actually more more industrial feedback. So, like like that, we got got here today so that would be that would be the most beneficial one so for sure we we use our own industrial partners on on getting uh, details and uh, design requirements and so on but uh, real world use and maybe that would be the last question we should discuss here that all of us has pilots isn't it so we have we have we have been running pilots or we would we would sorry not running um, but we would like to run pilots and in order to validate our uh, platforms our digital twins uh, what is the time frame that you have actually so that it will be it will be running just to get the kind of an understanding to our industrial partners yeah we, we, we can go the same route like cogito beam to twin ashwin and beam proof yeah, I, I think, think there we go Ashwin. sorry i couldn't Ashwin. hear i couldn't hear your microphone yeah. get got really bad on my side so i was going to ask you can you repeat your question yeah the, the question was it's that uh, how long will your pilots last so what is the validation time <laughs> uh it's it's at least for a year uh i suspect so there's a pre-validation and then the validation there's an overlap period between the two of them i don't have on top of my, my mind but it should be i think it starts around the end of the summer uh, around the summer next year i think july something like this july august uh, and run for i think nearly a year uh, from then and obviously there is opportunity to the pilots may not be used the day 
uh, implement everything continuously, but we may uh, try to do a bit of uh, uh, iterative and get feedback and maybe uh, try again. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the first, the first uh, demo of, uh, would be issued in one year. Uh, so um, Bruno, I think we cannot hear you very well. I, it's I, very can, I can hear you, Bruno. I think it's a connection problem or something. No, it, it's not better, sorry. <laughs> Sorry? Oh. And it, yeah, it's officially on the application, it's already off, but it's still showing the video. So, <laughs> yeah, but we are a little bit afraid to touch it because otherwise the, the whole system will crash. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, let's, let's just, uh, yeah, let's move forward to, to then Ashwin and then maybe <coughs> you, you can write the, the, the answer in the chat. Um, so on our case, it will depend. Um, like I said, we have demo cases uh, or the pilot cases um, that will cover the design part. Uh, we have uh, pilot cases that will cover the construction and pilot cases that will cover the, the maintenance part. And uh, there will be uh, 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 different validation stages for different tools. Uh, I, I can say that uh, especially, uh, let's say the platform, like I mentioned, it's already running from month six and it's gonna run continuously even after the project uh, start. Uh, data is already flowing in and um, I will keep flowing in um, um, as we add more things and um, uh, we collect more data from, the, uh, from different pilot sites. Um, and um, uh, having the, the data, I think it's, um, 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 it's just a matter of using it and um, um, having uh, uh, um, Kind of a, a iterative approach to develop the tools and then try them out and uh, um, um, uh, get always in, in touch and uh, close contact with the with the pilot cases and uh, do a kind of a iterative uh, um, uh, let's say validation of the of the tools okay thank you uh, then um, Ruprecht. Yeah, in Vimproof, uh, we will start uh, setting up them next year, February, March. So in the midst of the project, and they last uh, will last a little bit more than one year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and uh, then uh, you can you you have you have said that uh, you had a very short time to test the system or or to to gather the the information. It was just those two kind of test trials. You what you have shown already. For, from our side, this is the, this is the initial uh, phase, right? Uh, just to to verify that it works, right? And uh, now we have to do much more, like longer term studies. Like actually, next year in, we have a, a, a larger project going up here in, in Aarhus, where they do the foundation work, and that's where we'll deploy the technology uh, and and many other sensors, actually dust, mm -hmm. uh, vibration, noise from other partners. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, it, I, I think it's we, we, we need to continue the discussion, but not now. We are getting kind of thrown out from our physical lobby. <laughs> not like you guys, you, could, you, can, you can go on, uh, but uh, at least uh, the physical part is over here. Uh, I think uh, it was very, very good to share ideas and, uh, and to share the, the experiences and also to get Kind of feedback from from industrial side that uh, that what is the the burning issues. Uh, I think the project at least the projects will meet not so long time. So there will be um, a workshop in in middle of October in uh, in uh, oh, Luxembourg. So some of the the projects will meet there, as far as I know. Um, there is an ontology discussion from from our sister projects fair. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And uh, otherwise, I think uh, I will try to kind of gather some some kind of uh, remarks or, or questions that I made notes here, and then we try to kind of disseminate in between each other, and and then we can share the ideas. Okay. Yes. So uh, that was all. Thank you very much for participating on the workshop for the four EU projects on sustainable places 2021. Um, 
we will be having a nice dinner. Uh, I hope you too. <laughs> yeah, put it, yeah. Put it this, this was unfair to say, to be honest. I, I really wish <laughs> I could be in Rome right now. And, and I hope have a nice time. Dinner. Next time, hopefully. Next time. Uh, Thank you. Next, in next time. Yes. I'm That's heading good. to the airport. Give me a seat. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, have a, have a nice evening and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you, bye. everyone. Bye-bye.